But speaking of, you know, affordability, this is a nice segue. <laughs> yeah. You were straight out on the Ducati Scrambler launch. This is a bike we both rather like, I would say, sort of over the years. Something yeah. we both positively reviewed and you owned the yes. icon didn't you the first gen i did i think it was a 2015 so i think it literally was one of the first batch to come out um might have been only a year old anyway when they first released uh i loved it i know you loved it because i've still got a video somewhere have you uh taken mine out with your gopro and you can audibly hear your giggles over the top of it <laughs> well i think You've got to find the right road, but that was like yes. a gravelly, yeah, yeah. sweeping country road. Yeah. And it wasn't too high speed, but like, you know, you could chuck it about a bit. And for that sort of thing, it's, it was perfect. For commuting yeah. as well, I think I can see why you had one in London. So yes. yeah, we both liked it. Got to say mm. though, before we get into the new one, you got to then say why you sold it. I, don't, I can't remember, but... Uh, yeah, do you know what? I was trying to remember this morning. I was going around my kitchen and I was like, hmm, why did, <laughs> why did I get rid of that? I think it was probably just because I'm, uh, I don't know, changeable like that. Changeable like the winds. Um, and I just, you know, for whatever reason, I uh, it was a good get it in my head that something yeah. else would be better. But the, the reason I'm so confused as to why I changed it is because of what I changed it for, which was the Motogatsi V9. But I don't know why anyone would do that. So, <laughs> I mean, the V9 was a great bike, but I was like, why the hell did I... I don't understand. Because normally what I'll do is I'll bounce between a bike that can do distance, but it's big and heavy, and then a small bike that's great for town. And then I'll just flip-flop between the two, and I'll go, no, I need something for touring and distance because I'm sick of sitting on a small bike. And then I'll use that in a town and I'll go, oh, no, I need a small bike because I'm sick of trying to battle through town with a big, heavy bike. Yeah. With the V9, I'm like, why the hell does that one make... Anyway. In my mind, I think you were thinking that it was it was the best of both worlds. It was like a quite yeah. a nice looking retro, but you thought because it was cruiser style, yeah. you could do a bit of distance on it. Did yeah. that pan out or... Yeah, you've, you've remembered... Actually, that is... Yeah, now that you say that, it rings a bell. So yeah, I think because it, I'd seen you'd had it, and I, I remember speaking to you at the time when you were borrowing it and um, saying about how comfortable it was. And, you know, it was actually, and it feels bigger than it, than the engine capacity or the power yeah. it felt like a bigger bike somehow um so my theory yes correct i think was that it might be better for distance and it absolutely well it was slightly better <laughs> Let's right. be but the ducati scrambler is an awful bike to try and do touring or distance on because it's uh it's just so small you just get battered around a little bit it'll do it happily i mean it's not the bike that'll fail it's you just because you'll be tired on it whereas yeah. if you're on something like um i mean Africa Twin, Tiger, obviously that's going to be more comfortable. But even the V9 was slightly more comfortable, maybe because of the the position and the fact that you could sort of shift around a little bit more in the saddle. But um, yeah, but yeah, I think the, that was the main reason. I think it was a curiosity pick, to be honest. And the V9 was uh, moderately customized, so it just sort of looked really good. And it was a bit of a bargain, so that's why I switched up. But I do miss... The Scrambler, in a certain way, I had a really big love-hate relationship with it because it let me down kind of early doors with some electrical fault that I needed fixing. And What was that? Uh, that was the kill switch, actually. For whatever reason, the kill switch mucked up, and it, um, for those who don't know, stra <laughs> stranded me on the A40 just as you were sort of like going on to the M40 just before my exit at night in the rain in the third lane um that's quite a quite a cheap fix though isn't it yeah if you can figure out what it is so it uh, took a little yeah, bit of investigating yeah, yeah. to what it was because we weren't really sure i took it to a specialist actually around here but even he took a few pokes at it to work out what the actual fault was and then yeah it was easy enough to fix but it shouldn't have happened and it's never happened on another bike and like i say the fact that it did it in the third lane at night with no hard shoulder in the rain and i was like if if the traffic was worse then I'd have been really scuppered where I was. That would have been a really dangerous and scary scenario. When you say it was the kill switch, you're not saying that you just did that thing where... I knocked the... Yeah, no, I didn't, <laughs> no. <laughs> Sounds like I'm you saying just I can't ride here. Took it to a specialist. He spent a day <laughs> sort of fault finding and then he was like, at the end of the day, oh, you, you flicked the kill switch. He just, he just flipped the red switch, yeah, and that fixed it, uh, funny enough. <laughs> Electrical fault. No, what I mean is it was... Um, yeah, just it was it was uh what would you call it? Like arcing, I suppose. Whatever it was anyway, it was it was malfunctioning and it was chiming in and cutting out the engine. Um 
of its own accord without touching the kill switch, nothing else. And even when I pulled over, that was the first thing I checked when I pulled over and uh, that didn't fix it. And I gave it like a, um, I was trying to sort of like switch it on off, on off, try to sort of jog it into life in case that was the fault and it didn't seem to like it. So it was a fault. You always get electrical gremlins. It's not, yeah, I know, this yeah. is not Ducati Scrambler specific. <laughs> it's Italian bike specific, but it's not Ducati <laughs> Scrambler specific. Mm. Anyway, so you got onto the, the, you're out in Valencia, was it, for the yes. new Scrambler? Yeah. Have you been there before? No. It looks amazing. I love those like. roads. I mean, I, I, you actually went to Almeria not long after me, and yes. I thought those are the best roads I've ever been on in my life. And then we went to Valencia and on this bike, I was like, nope, these are slightly better. And they're both very, very good. But the route they took us on was fantastic. It was long, but it was really, really good and very appropriate for the bike. But you also did city riding on the first day, right? We did. Yeah, we turned up um, all on our chin strap because of an early flight and then rode through <clears throat> Valencia, um, through the city, did a bit of commuting in a in a foreign city. I was like, I need to be more alert for this. <laughs> but uh, we got through it. We got to the, the beach, actually, and um, did a fun sort of scavenger hunt of trying to find a photo. They set this thing up where um, they were like, you know, try and find the an image that to you says UK Scrambler. So we had to go and find a place around these docks. Um, it was quite a nice area, actually. So we just went exploring. Perfect. And uh, took some photos. But yeah, even, I mean, around city, you know, it's going to work well. Uh, it's not exciting riding. Um, but it's a perfect little city bike. The only gripe I had, and this goes on to sort of my favorite things of the bike specifically. The big gripe I had with mine was that the throttle on the original Scrambler was a light switch and you either went on or off, on or off. And that's fine if you were going on country roads and you just wanted to open it wide and just blast off. So yeah. Blast off is not that powerful, but it's okay. Um, whereas in a city, you want it to be a little bit more measured than that so that you can tease it a little bit and, and just ride a bit smoother. So with this one, they've given it ride by wire. Great. And the engine is now electronically managed or more so. And that means that it is uh, so, so much smoother. Is it really? the new version. Yeah, ah. night and day. It's, it's so much more refined in terms of, yeah, how precise you can be with that throttle control. And there's no lag as you sometimes get with ride by wire. So it's, it's, you know, there's, um, it works really well, basically. So that's what I quite liked about yours. I think we were just talking about mm. me whooping into my GoPro while we were on like a country road. And I think that immediacy yeah. is quite yes. nice. Um, and that's probably what made it fun when you're at yeah. speed, when you're, yeah. when you're doing low speed town work, I can see how that becomes wearying. Um, yes. so in removing that snap, yeah. You're saying they've made a better town bike and you've got different modes now, right? You do. And that's the other thing. So yeah, if you're craving that immediacy yeah. and actually with the other people I was on the day with, I kept, you know, we were checking in with each other and they were saying they didn't really feel much of a difference with the rider modes, but I have to say I did. That's pretty because, immediately. Mate, you're in tune with the GK Scrambler. <laughs> It made me really, yeah, I guess because of the scrambler, but it made me really question it because I was like, why aren't they? And then I, I checked it. I kept checking it for the rest of the day. I was like, no, I really can tell the difference between them. You see, you've got road and you've got sport. Um, so no like rain mode as you'll often find on others, but road basically would take up that position because it's just a little bit um, more reserved, I guess. A little bit, yeah, a bit softer. A little bit, yeah, a little bit softer, more forgiving. So you do that in a town and that's absolutely fine. And then when you get out, and I left it in road for the majority of the first day, in fact, all of the first day, and then uh, the first leg of the second day. And then I stuck it in sport when we were doing the little flybys and things. And I immediately felt that it was just, um, I said that it basically felt like you just wafted smelling salts under its nose. And it was like, <laughs> alive. let's go. Yeah, it really comes alive. So it was much more alert, basically. It just It just makes the bike wake up a little bit more. Not that it was boring in road mode, because it was still just as fun. Yeah. Yeah, but that those two things, thats that was the first thing that really, really stood out to me and probably the biggest thing that stood out to me of that bike and why I liked it as much. So much better throttle throttle manners and, and versatility there. Exactly that. And then the other thing that really I was obviously very happy to see was that it was still just as fun, agile, you know, uh, predictable a bike yeah. as my version. And that's, for me, they feel like um, the Ducati Monster because it, in essence, you know, is Very shared similar. roots with. Yeah. yeah. So if you think about the older Ducati Monsters of which my dad, uh, it was the sort of bike I was like, my dad would feel so comfortable on this so quickly because it's so much like his S2R, but just, you know, a little bit more updated than that. 
Yeah. Um, and one of the things he says about it is just that you know every inch. You know exactly what the bike's doing. So if something pops up or you, you go over some gravel or whatever and maybe it sort of like kicks out on you or something like that, you can get it back a lot easier than you could with some of the bikes. So it's not on a razor's edge of performance where, you know, the suspension's so stiff and yes, and the throttle's so, you know, grabby and stuff that um, it will bite you if you, you know, don't use it properly. This one has enough leeway in play that for any kind of rider, you can get on it and just feel so comfortable. Um, and it was the most comfortable I've, I've felt definitely uh, going around. I mean, they're instantly comfortable, but then it's my kind of bike. It's something I can really dial into. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. And they've also shared a bit of weight, haven't they? A little bit. I can't say I noticed. I mean, it's, so mine was a year and a half ago, two years ago that I got rid and it would be impossible to kind of retain in my head what that feels like in terms of weight. So they have, it's four kilograms in total. They've actually okay. gone over the engine, made that lighter. The clutch is lighter, like uh, the battery's smaller. That's one of the ways they've uh, managed to get it down. But um, yeah, I don't know that you'll really notice that. That's not the biggest difference. It's not very I profound. Think- uh, and I'm not criticizing Ducati for this because everybody does it, but I think in the press release, it might have said something like seven kilos off the chassis and you start to think, well, that's mm. quite a lot, but clearly with the electronics and stuff, perhaps there's a bit of extra weight. And so actually the total that curb, makes sense. So it balances. Yeah. Yeah. It's not quite as big a saving as, as if you look at a specific component, but then, and I said this in the review as well, it's always been a light bike. So yeah. if you can get four kilograms off a light bike, we're not talking about some big heavyweight. It's not some, you know, if you're trying to get some weight off a Harley, it's probably a little bit easier than it is off some little skinny Ducati Scrambler. Yes. So any weight savings are impressive. And it was never a weakness of the bike anyway, because it is so agile and nimble. I mean, let's just take a quick look at the numbers on that. I'll, I'll get them up here. So the, the, the main competitor for this is the G, uh, the Triumph Scrambler 900, they call it now. It used to be called yeah. the Street Scrambler. So mm. I'm just looking now, the Scrambler 900 from Triumph, total wet weight, 223 kilograms. Whereas the curb weight for the Scrambler Icon, the current mm. gen, is 185 curb. Yeah, And yeah. so, you know, given the, the similar price, yeah. I think there's a couple of hundred quid in it. Mm. And given that the Scrambler icon makes 73 horsepower 73 horsepower well done mate you got notes or <laughs> just came to <laughs> no, mind no. yeah um 64 on the uh the triumph and mm. i mean there's a bit more torque it makes it sort of um grunt much lower down 3000 yeah, yeah. rpm it makes 80 newton meters so it's much more of that gutsy whereas mm. you've got something like uh 65 on the scrum, yeah and it's high up it's like seven thousand. Yeah. but yes. i think that gives you the the difference between those two bikes is that the, mm. the triumph's substantial and it feels like that it feels meaty and talky and it's a bigger mm-hmm. bike mm-hmm. Uh, whereas you're going to get a lot more performance from the the scrambler and if you if you're on open roads as well and you're willing to rev it out a bit yeah it's going to be a, a lot more lively, a lot more agile. And that's, that's impressive, isn't it? That's what? Yeah. Nearly 40 kilograms less. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Massive it's, difference. I mean, yeah, it's like a half a pillion, basically. So <laughs> taking off half, the back or, you slice know, them, th- what, <laughs> down the middle or across? Yeah, across. <laughs> um, they can still hang on then. <laughs> exactly like that was my thinking logically you see um but it is massive yeah and it, it's it's noticeable it really is noticeable and i agree i mean like they're all they suit different kinds of riders i suppose but all i can tell you is that there are very there are a few bikes and i'm sure you have the same right where you hop on it and there is no warm-up required it's like i am and you know, I get this bike i'm in tune with it instantly Easy and the, the scramble is one of them yeah and it's it's because i like like I say, the monster element of it, the fact that I've ridden monsters and that is why I like that one in the first place. It's 10 grand now though, isn't it? The, the, the scrambler icon. And I think I was looking yeah. at that, having known that it was, it started at like eight a few years ago and yeah. it went up to like nine ish. Now it's 10 grand for the basic yeah. scrambler icon. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at that thinking it's quite steep, but actually when you start to look at what you get in with the, you know, Brembo brakes, you've got more tech now and the yep. power and the, how light it is and yep. how easy it is to ride. Mm. I mean, it, honestly, as a first big bike, if you want something a bit retro, 
I think it's probably quite a good choice. It's not too intimidating. Yeah. It feels special. Yeah. I mean, you've got servicing costs maybe that might be a bit hard to stomach for a, a new yeah, rider. Yeah, and they, they will be. It, yeah. That's the one where like, if you hear the word Desmo service, that's where people normally faint and hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> or sell the bike, which is often what you'll find on Auto Trader as well. You'll see it says like, you know, funnily enough, it's always at the same sort of mileage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so... It, it definitely, the other thing that really stood out to me, and yeah, I think when you said about like, the price of it, yeah, to me, I guess still, but then because I'm buying second hand bikes, uh, yeah, you go, ooh, a little steep. But then you look at the competition, and actually, it's not too far out, out of whack or out of line with its competition anyway. It's just that things are getting more expensive. You've got the um, the Triumph 9795 yeah. for the basic yeah. color, so you'll have exactly. that a bit. XSR 700, that's. 8,260. Yeah. So that's probably the best, um, yes, best bet in terms of like value for money. And it's quite fun to ride, similar power, sure. quite light as well. But I would say it doesn't have that pride of ownership. There's not as much tech as well. So. No, and you, you know, you're gonna have to go a long way to beat Yamaha on value for money as yes. well. I think, yeah, 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 exactly. If you're ever having a value for money conversation, it will always end with an equivalent Yamaha. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the pride of ownership, I think agreed. And I think with this one, what's really nice to see sort of ties into my other, my third sort of um, thing that I took away from the day was the looks, because I remember seeing when you showed me the, the new one, or yeah. I saw you walking around Eichmer and I, I was like, Oh, they've changed it. And I'm not sure I like it. It's a bit modern looking. And yeah. the idea was that it was, you know, playing on the heritage and it's a classic looking bike. But, if you think of things like the, you know, the Husqvarna's, the Vipillins and stuff like that, they're neo retro looking where it's sort of like, it kind of is retro and kind of not where it's got its own little thing going on. I think they're sort of straying into that territory a little bit more. And I have to say, seeing it in the flesh, um, I said to the guys there as well, it's, it's quite funny how quickly the last version can start to look dated when you're looking at the new one and it's overtaking yeah. it. I actually prefer the look of this one now than my version um you can see that they've put a lot of effort into that design and the big thing is on mine where you had colored tank and then metal panels yeah. which were harder to get off if you wanted to do any sort of customized customization it was a little bit trickier to sort of make it a little bit more unique this one it's metal tank underneath which is the silver part and then plastic covers on the surround and it takes 30 minutes to 45 minutes to change the entire color of the bike yeah so if you if you're a bit flush and you want to buy yourself like multiple panels on any given day you could decide to just change the color of your bike and go out so you um, can convince your neighbors that you've got two yeah. bikes <laughs> yeah exactly but you know, you could mix and match. You could uh, oh, you yeah. could make it a little bit more unique, right? You can make a combination of colors if you really wanted to, or you can take it off. And which, what I was always tempted to do is like you know put your own vibe on it. If it's like sticker bomb it or paint it yourself, you know, it's easy enough to do, and you could change the color of it pretty quickly. Yeah, it sounds pretty awesome. What about yeah. the TFT display? Don't like it. <laughs> no i'm the same as you it's it's clearer it's better clearly it's better than the last one it's got phone stuff as well like bluetooth you can get nav yeah blah, blah, blah. functionality massive but i think the same with you um if you look at the likes of triumph as an example i think that their instruments their instrument clusters and sort of like configuration often do look better um, and I think you probably could get away with making a classic looking display on there. I don't think they needed to go that full digital route, but you know, so something like, I think was it, we talked about the scrambler 1200 from triumph, which is mm. TFT with all the functionality, but it's round. Yes. And then it has some sort of displays around the edge. And so it feels like a great, uh, what would you call that? Like compromise of, uh, yeah. a sort of retro Hybrid aesthetic of the two. yeah 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 whereas this ducati one is much more like a, a square it's got a little bit of detail in the surround but ultimately it is a yeah. square tft uh, or rectangular Basically. rather tft dash um which i don't know like you say maybe they are leaning more into that modern but also retro neo retro as you called it like much like the the honda we were just talking about the cl500 yes. has yeah. a bit of a ba balance of the two mm. and so maybe you can afford a, a few things like that but it was a nice dash as well on the old one if if a little bit simple yeah i think it worked well it was similar to the it was similar to the husky because the husky's um you know is single color it's not uh, a color tft or anything like that and it but it's got all the information you need the, but the color doesn't the, having a color on there doesn't make a jot of difference at all 
because as long as the information is clear, that's fine. But I just think going for something a bit cleaner. I, I quite like sort of the um, you know the Thruxtons and stuff like that, where Triumph have got an actual manual manual. What's it called? Analog clock. An, sorry, analog clock. Yeah, analog uh, dial and stuff. But you've got a little digital display in it with slice. the information you need, right? Yeah. And that's all you need. All you need is to see that it says road and and sport. But this depends uh, if you if you're going to use the phone functionality. Which oh, then well, yeah, that's true. You can't you, do that. On then the you need it. Then I'm talking absolute tosh. Then uh, <laughs> yeah, you right. That's that's the call to make, isn't it? I suppose if you can use is. that stuff, it'll be valuable. If, you, if you're is. not, then yeah, it doesn't really matter. So no, much. you are you are quite right. So in terms of that, it's got functionality. I just feel like you, like you say, I guess yeah. Then the Scrambler 1200 is the more obvious um, parallel to it, and you can definitely go with a modern looking information, but you know, a more classic looking aesthetic. But hey, so in summary, good, bad. In summary, I want one. And, uh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it made me miss mine, which is yeah. always a good start. Um, obviously means that you liked it. And uh, if I was buying now, I, I don't think, knowing that it's out there, I would find it hard to buy myself the previous gen. Um, I think I'd probably want the new one, however that works. Very good, mate. Well, that's the Scrambler Week tied up. 